Hello and welcome to a new video about control engineering. This time we want to fix what we discovered last time. Yeah? Last time we talked about um, optimal amount controller and we realized hey, it's working good. But if the uh, system has some integrational part in it and I only try to compensate this with a P controller, yeah? make this with a P controller, because it already looks like an IT1 system, then oh, the jump response, the reference transfer function looks still great. However, the disturbance transfer function is not disappearing. Yeah? So we have to think about something else. Here I've drawn again the situation we faced last time. Yeah? So this, is, this was the system, yeah? and with the help of a P controller, we pulled the system down so that the crossover frequency was at the half of the of the bending frequency of the IT1 element. Okay? So and we realized we calculated here we have 20, so we have to we have to bring this down to to, to 1 yeah, and 1 divided by 20 is 0 0.05 and so this must be the gain factor of the P controller, then it should look like this. And really it looked like this. That uh, and really, the reference transfer function was looking good. However, uh, the disturbance transfer function was not that good. And we said this is simply because the disturbance transfer function is, well, the, the, it is the more, it is better if the, if the governor is significantly higher than the system. Well, this cannot be met anyway. Yeah? However, here the, the, the controller is at a constant value and the system is getting higher and higher and higher. What we need to have to also compensate errors is we also have to use an I part somewhere in the, in the controller. So we have to use an, an I part in the controller. So at least a PI controller. Huh? This I part in the controller will smooth away the the uh, errors. Huh? Well, where to put it? Huh? When we think about an iPad, huh, I will draw this. I will draw simply somewhere right now an iPad. Huh? Let's use it here. Huh? Here. This would be the I part of a PI controller and the blue line and the and the green line now makes a PI controller. With this here, where this band is, this is 1 divided by Tn. Okay? And the only thing I have to select is where I put it. Yeah? And if we look here, the, the, the PI controller, it has here minus 90 degree. Yeah? Then starting where we getting flat, we are going we going up to zero degree. Yeah. The combined the combined transfer function would then simply look like that. Yeah, that we have here here minus ninety minus ninety. So here we have minus one hundred eighty. Here we're going up because it's minus 90 and 0 to minus 90 and then this will stay at 0 so it would look like that. The real phase is looking somehow like that, going up in the middle of this, going down again. Something like that. Important is that the maximum here would be the phase reserve. Yeah? That the maximum phase reserve is in the middle of this window. Clear, right? So, if we have it like that, where would we put this? Yeah? Of course, on one side, here at the crossover frequency, we want to have the maximum, so we need to put this at this was half of the band frequency, so we put it at a quarter 
okay? And a quarter. So actually, in this case, this is one, and a quarter of one is 0 0.25. So what we want to do is we put here to 0 0.25, somewhere like here. Huh? Here. We want to put this, this would then be the correct eye part. Okay, so this is, this is at, if this is omega, omega g, yeah, so this is omega g fourth, and this is omega g half. Yeah? Then this window is symmetrical to the, to the crossover frequency, and actually this, this is why this is called that way. Yeah? Why symmetrical? Because then this maximum phase reserve is exactly where the crossover frequency is. Huh? And this we want to have. Right? We want to have where we pinch the one line, we want to have the maximum phase reserve. This would be, this would be good. Yeah? I will show you at the computer this situation yeah? and then we can shift around a little bit. So here is the situation on the computer. Huh? I've drawn exactly the same picture as I've shown you here. Uh, well, I shifted a little bit this axis, yeah, so that it put it more into focus the system. Yeah? So with this KR of 0 0.05, it was same situation like in the optimal amount, and we moved the, the crossover frequency from two to the half yeah, to 0 0.5. This is what would happen. What happened here? Yeah? This was also what we've done last time with this with this P controller, right? Okay. So where to put this this band frequency of of the PI controller? Yeah? Because if I change the TN value, let's say to 50, something like this, yeah? then I can simply select this band, and you see. Exactly, here is a band frequency and here is a band frequency and exactly in the middle of both bands I have the maximum phase reserve. Yeah? So the black line here, this is the resulting line yeah? of the open loop transfer function. And there, this we want to have a look at to, to find the phase reserve. So let's simply use this yeah? and, and try it out. Yeah? To remember, yeah? Calculate this. This was the situation without integrating part. Uh, so this this looked fine. Uh, step response looked fine. The the reference transfer uh, function. However, the you see the disturbance transfer function. This was simply not going away. Uh, so now I have put this here also. This is the situation. Yeah, I've just copied this to a PDF. Now we will turn on the integrational part and what we have done here, what we have 51 divided by 50, 1 divided by 5 is 0 0.2, 0 0.02. 0 0.02, 0 0.02, because this is 1 divided by the n, okay. Yeah. Let's see how this looks like in comparison. Aha! Aha! Let's compare those two things. All right. I mean, yeah, here seems to be hmm, there is a little bit different. It looks a little bit different here at the beginning, yeah, but not too much. And here the disturbance still high, yeah, but at least it looks like it goes away. This is simply because with this integration time we just entered the the controller is now compensating the error. So right now we have an integration time of 50 seconds. So after 5 times 50 seconds, so 25 seconds, it would look like 250 seconds. I think it would be gone away, huh? the disturbance, roughly. Okay, so the goal is to put 
this band here also as high as possible. Yeah? And those two things, to have the maximum phase reserve at the crossover frequency and to put this as high as possible, is leading us to the fact that this crossover frequency is in the middle of those two bands and one band is at, at the band frequency of the system, the crossover frequency is at the half of the band frequency of the system, so the second band needs to be at a quarter. Yeah? So if the frequency is at a quarter, the time constant must be four times higher, four. Yeah? And so you see, here is now the band, yeah? and exactly in the middle where we have the maximum phase reserve, which is now reduced, however, yeah? is there is the, the crossover frequency. So we need to use four, so a quarter 0 0.25. Here, if we're using here as kn 0 0.25, okay, dokie, calculate, aha, uh -huh. error is gone. Yeah, and it's not gone. It still has a huge effect. However, it will be compensated. This is nice. Yeah? So the error is going to be compensated. What's not that nice, let's say, is here this, this step response, the reference transfer function. This did, it did not work very pretty well. Eh? But this is the typical, typical step response of the reference transfer function of a symmetrical optimal uh, amount calculator. Eh? Calculator, controller. Eh? If you adjust something according to the symmetrical optimum, the step response would look like that. Yeah? So we have quite an overswing, 45%, yeah? something like this. This is of course not permittable in quite a lot of cases. Yeah? So this is simply because we have here quite low phase reserve. Yeah? How can we deal with that? Well. I will make now a picture of this. Yeah. Open it. So that is stored now. Huh? This is now our picture, symmetrical optimum. And now I show you what we could do. Yeah. We could, we could pre-filter the, the desired value, the, the reference value. So here, this is the reference value, right? And if I'm not directly using the reference value, I put it away. Yeah? And I add another filter system, so I use a PT1 system here, here, and I will make this connection. Want to have it beautiful. Back, back. These I also want to. These I want to rename. This shall not be Y1. This is W1 because it's the wanted value, yeah? and I want to have it also in my oscilloscope. I only have to select the filter time, and as filter time I need the same time constant as in the controller. Yeah? So actually, if I'm using here 4 seconds, yeah? and I'm looking now what is happening, you see what happened. Yeah? What do we see here? This green line is still the, the reference value. After the filter, it's the purple line. So the purple line is the desired value which the controller is working with. And this helps this overspin tremendously, yeah? because it is not already there. Yeah? It will appear slowly. This overswing is still done by the controller. However, the, the set point is compensating this. Yeah? If we compare it to what was it before, yeah? here you see in the disturbance nothing changed. Nothing. Yeah? Yeah, clear, because the disturbance nothing has to do with the, with the uh, desired value, with the reference variable. Yeah? The, desired, uh, the disturbance is only inside the control loop. Yeah? Not What we have done is we only compensa compensated the set point which is coming from the outside. Yeah? And we made it simply slower, so yeah, it is a little bit slower. However, this massive overswing here 
this is gone. Okay? This is simply gone. Yeah, you see, you can control something with an eye part. Yeah? Well, you have to do a little trick here and there, yeah? but then it's working. This is why there is nothing like a not controllable system. It's just getting more and more complex. Yeah? And if you then take into account measures for anti-wind-up and so on, and also have to think about what to do if you're running into some, some restraints yeah, in some forbidden areas. These are then very interesting corner cases, yeah, how the controller needs to perform at these cases. However, you know, if you understood everything which I have tried to explain up to now, I think you are in a very good part, path. Huh? Uh, those corner cases, they are that specific to your application yeah, that it cannot be covered simply here with some videos. Yeah, you have to you have to really think about the system and and try how to compensate this. Yeah? So it's just filtering and so on. This is always a good idea to think about that. So this was now uh, tuning the control system with the help of the body plot. Uh, we've learned two methods, the optimal amount, it's symmetrical optimum now. Next time we're going to discuss or hear something about a more empiric method. Uh, so adjusting, experimental adjusting of the, of the control loop. There are a number of, of rules out there. Yeah? Next time we are learning the first rule. This is tuning a control loop according to Ziegler and Nichols. This will then be next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.